Welcome to Maybe Analysis for Hedgehogs. So today I want to answer some questions about virus sodo. For instance, why are there some files that um, the community of virus sodo cannot agree upon uh, whether they are malicious or clean? And um, what's the most uploaded file on virus sodo? How do you find uh, similar samples? And maybe explain some basic usage. So I hope this is useful for you. So let's see. All right, let's check out some files on virus total, right? Um, the first one I want to look at is this one. Um, we see it's not detected uh, by any of the antivirus scanners. Firstly, there's this overview, like the uh, ones that detect the file are put on top. So you can always be sure if you see only undetected ones, um, they, there's not uh, one detection like down below. Um, also, here's a summary that's saying, okay, no, uh, none of the antivirus scanners says it's malicious. So then there is a community score right down, uh, right underneath. And the community score is overwhelmingly negative. What is this? Um, everyone who has a, an account on Virustoto can uh, vote for the file. If you, the X means you think it's malicious and uh, the check mark means you think it's clean, it's fine. If you check on the community tab and scroll down, you see the voting details. So these are people who voted uh, for or against this file. Um, a lot of them are marked as anonymous. Anonymous was like a few years ago, um, it was possible to vote without an account. So you have these anonymous votes that are like four years old in this case. And um, then there are people with an account and some of them have a lot of voting power because if you go on a profile and click on trusted, um, and lots of people do that, uh, you will get more voting power. So that's how um, they want to ensure that only people who know what they're doing can, um, that their opinion counts more, right? Yeah. Um, so what's happening? Why do all of these scanners not detect the file, but all of these people think it's malicious. Now, the first thing I do, if none of the antivirus scanners detects anything, is I check when was this file submitted for the first time. And that's in the details tab history section. You see the date of first submission, and that's been more than 10 years ago. It's um, pretty much, um, it's very, very, very unlikely that a file has gone unnoticed for more than 10 years um, and is malicious at the same time. So if you see something like that, even if the first submission is like a few months ago, um, you can be quite sure it's a clean file. People so think it's malicious. Um, the answer to that is because it's often related to executing malware. In this case, we have the Windows scripting host. We see here the signature information that's, uh, this file is signed by Microsoft. It's a Microsoft file. You also see this here. The file was published by Microsoft Corporation. Um, so you can be sure it's, it's a valid file by Microsoft. And it's part of the operating system and uh, used to execute script files like um, VBScript or JScript. So that's why it's um, also seen as malicious by some people because sometimes this file will execute malicious scripts, but it's not malicious itself, right? Um, but the people don't know that. And the um, Windows scripting host might be... Um, might be additionally, you know, dropped by malware to execute malware scripts. And then it may have a different name like um, this one or this one. And <clears throat> in that case, if you find that in the temp folder and you know it has been executing malicious code, 
um, you know it's somehow related to your malware file, um, you might think it's malware as well. Yeah, the same can happen with, uh, for instance, Python Exe. Um, but yeah, I think that's that's a good good thing to know here. Now the good thing is if you have something like WScript EZ or Python EXE or anything that may be used to execute malware, you can check out the relations tab to find new malware because here you see, ah, those are scripts that have been executed. And if you click on those scripts, um, like this one, you see it's, it's malware, right? Um, well, there are not that many detections, but you also see that the last time it was scanned was more than a year ago. So let's click on the rescan button and see uh, what happens. And there are more antivirus scanners detecting the firmware now because yeah, that's like the second date you need to check, I guess. <laughs> um, if you have a file that's not detected much, check the date of the last uh, scan and you may click the reanalyze button so you see um, if the file is detected by now. There are some more dates. Let's go back here. Um, you see quite a few dates here. What do these mean? Now, first submission, we talked about that. Uh, the reason I like to look at that one is it cannot be faked by uh, malware developers because like this is like the minimum time this file um, is old, minimum. Um, you can also check out the creation time. Creation time is if you have a portable executable file, this is part of the, um, this is the compilation date that the compiler puts in there into the portable executable header. But this uh, can be wrong. So some compilers put in the wrong date and malware authors may just change the date. So um, the signature date, on the other hand, that's the date uh, when this file was signed. So we should see this reflected here as well. So that's the same one, right? Um, now, yeah, last submission, when was the uh, file uploaded the last time? Um, and by now you can, as we have seen, analyze the file uh, without uploading it. If you just click this reanalyze button and that's the last analysis date. So those are the dates, all right. Um, let's check out another file, right? Because um, this one is an actual malware and I think that's interesting to see the behavior tab in virus Server. If you check this out, like lots of detections here say it's ransomware and uh, the behavior tab will show you uh, files opened and written and the files written, oh, those, those are ransom notes. Um, there are also two batch files. Now, lots of lots of ransom notes. Now check out files deleted. The batch files have been deleted at some point. And here are files copied. Oh, that's weird. Does it have to do with C sharp? No, there's C++. Okay. If you click on the plus, you see where it's been copied to. Now the ransomware copied the original file or better renamed the original file, just appended the extension. And afterwards it probably encrypts this. So uh, I guess it's why it's been shown as copied. And um, then you can also see the processes. This is the original file and it executed those batch files. So highlighted actions here in this case, it shows us get tick count because this might be um, a way for the malware to detect that it's being run in a sandbox. So this might be interesting for us to know if it has sandbox detection and won't do much in the sandbox. Um, and uh, this has been highlighted uh, as highlighted text. The cmd.exe is being used to execute the batch file. So there we have this connection. Okay, now let's take a look at this file. This is probably the most uploaded file to VirusTotal. And um, like 
I know a few years ago when I looked at this, like this was also in the red, the community score. If you check out the votes, you will see lots of people very negative on this file. So they think it's malicious. Um, even some with a bit more reputation. It's not just the anonymous um, people. Like, um, So what's happening here? It's undetected. So again, let's check out the last, um, the first submission date, and it's pretty, pretty old. Um, so it's most likely a clean file. And the names section will tell you what names were used um, while uploading the file. So what was the file name of it? And also here you see things that hint to um, it being malware. You see these, um, yeah, supposedly porno movies um, which are um, which have a double extension so it's a common trick to um, trick users into running malware um, and there are lots of them right uh, this seems to be quite malicious when you look at the names but if you check out the file size here it's zero bytes it's a it's an empty file now why is it the most uploaded file? Um, a lot of times when uh, the file fails to upload, VirusTotal will just scan an empty file and show you the result. So um, if for any reason, um, that's especially important if you are, if you're helping or assisting someone with a possible infection on their system. So if you see that, um, if you, of course, you don't have to remember the hash, but uh, if you see this um, zero size file, then you know it's been a problem with the upload, most likely. Of course, could also be actually an empty file, but um, most of the times there are actual malware files on these systems, and um, it's just the upload that's that's um, failed. Here's another file I wanted to show you the relations tab for this one because you can also see some URLs. Like in the other cases, we had only other files and here are also URLs. So you see what uh, how this looks like. And like with the files, you can click on them. You will not be um, brought to that URL. We, we will be brought to the virus total page for that URL, not the file that's being downloaded there, right? So, uh, this is different from the verdicts that are done for downloaded files. You see, for URLs, you usually just get a malware verdict and nothing else, uh, nothing about the malware type or the family that is um, there. Uh, and in this case, we also see this URL has um, already been taken down. It's not available anymore because um, it's been reported as malware, so. Okay, here's something else I would like to show you, and uh, that's the hashes and the details tab, because I didn't explain them yet. So, um, the most important hash is probably this one, because that's a um, cryptographic hash, and it's commonly used to refer to, to um, your sample. So, um, most of the time, also, uh, the other ones, MD5 and SHA-1, um, they might be used in malware reports to say, okay, this is the sample I was analyzing. So um, you will find these most often. But um, if you create reports, uh, I think you should use um, this one. Um, then the impash is a hash um, based on the imports of the file. The idea is that if two files have the same impash, they probably have the same behavior because they import the same um, functions and use the same Windows APIs, maybe. Um, so um, using the impash and searching by the impash may enable you to find similar samples. Um, then SSD. SSD is quite interesting for finding similar samples because this is... Um, a hash like uh, SHA-256 um, if you will, will change. If you just change one byte, the whole hash will be different, right? 
But with SSD, um, if you change just a few bytes, the hash will still be mostly the same. Like maybe maybe one or two characters are different um, after those changes. So you can actually find files that are uh, similar using SSD. Here's a very good article about thread attribution using SSD, and it explains how how SSD works, and um, also shows some examples and how you use the tool, and explains like in general those uh, kind of hashes. Uh, they are called context triggered piecewise hashes. So um, yeah, check it out. I will put it in the description below. So in um, the um, the other parts of the basic properties, uh, those are just the file type and the magic number and the file size. Now you already know what the file size, why it's useful, right? Um, the magic bytes, these, this is a byte sequence that um, tells the uh, um, executing program or the operating system uh, what kind of file type this is and so the magic bytes are related to the file type somehow but sometimes there's more information in it than just um, the file type I think this was here yeah, you see some more um, header information for um, this so it's not just the magic number I guess um, what you can find here and it's an actual Excel spreadsheet and then you have also some dates and so on. Now, everything that I showed you today is possible without having an intelligence account on Verisoto. Intelligence account is quite um, expensive. Most of the time you only have access to it if you work for a company that pays for that. So I, I'm not sure how interesting this, uh, an overview of that would be for you. So, um, yeah, if you have any questions, please put them down below and uh, I'd love to see you next time.